Hello and welcome back to live coverage of the first ever uh, TCG player Lorcana Invitational Qualifier. I'm Tandy, joined by Mason. Say hi, Mason. Hi, Mason. We've had a long day, five rounds of Swiss, and now the top eight is coming to a close. We are in the finals. Uh, it's going to be a pretty hot one, and uh, the players are about ready down in the feature match area. But Mason, so far, what uh, what's the deck that you've seen that you like the most outside of the classic? ruby amethyst control deck that you're probably going to play at the invitational yourself what deck do you like uh the deck nicholas is playing i like a good bit the amethyst steel deck is pretty nice um i also like the emerald uh amethyst deck we just saw a second ago i think that deck was kind of cool yeah I, I think so too uh you know i think emerald is one of the forgotten colors emerald and sapphire feel like the most forgotten colors so far in chapter one constructed maybe that changes with the next set you know if chapter two comes out in like a month and a half so it'll be exciting to see how that set actually shakes things up uh for now though we have a lot of really sweet uh decks in this tournament but ruby amethyst control seems to be you know at the at the end of the day it's just probably the best deck right yeah it's just the best deck just the best deck all right yeah. well we do have a ruby uh amethyst control deck in the finals here and we're gonna be pitting that up against the uh amber steel deck that we just watched from nicholas roush we got matthew camp on your right with ruby amethyst we got nicholas roush on your left with amber steel these players are ready to go nicholas roush's amber steel deck is the aggressor here and will be on the play for game number one of the finals big here winner is gonna join us in the invitational all right, turn one, Lilo. This is the gr a great start here for Nicholas Roush, and this is going to allow him to essentially quest for uh, huge chunks early if Campo doesn't have a goon or something similar to challenge it early on. Mm -hmm. All right, just ink on one, so no goon. This is very, very scary. Yeah, and this is why you see uh, Ruby Amethyst players, and most people actually know, play those one ink two two ones, the goons, as Todd calls them, because of things like these Lilo starts that can get out of hand. All right, really great start here from Nicholas Roush. Going to go Lilo into Simba Bodyguard here on two. That's going to protect from something like Rafiki down the line and something like Gaston, if that's the play for Matthew Campo on turn two. All right, draws for turn, finds a Maleficent 3. I see some red cards peeking out there, one of which might be the two-drop Gaston. Yeah, it's definitely a Dragonfire, and I think that is Gaston behind Maleficent. Uh, we have a Pocket Watch, too, that looks like, you know, while that does get really powerful in the late game, we sort of do just need to hit our ink drops. That is one of the things we've highlighted with the Ruby Amethyst deck, is you really want to hit all of your ink and be developing. So, All right, Pocket Watch is the play for Campo. This is going to lead to a Gaston on two and a passing of the turn back Nicholas Roush's way. If there's a Rafiki next turn, Rafiki plus Gaston is a great counter for this. But here's Ariel Singer. Let's see if we can find something to punish the Gaston, like uh, grab your sword. But here's just a BR guess, but a nice hit off of Ariel nonetheless. Yeah, Nicholas does have a grab your sword in hand. I wonder if you're supposed to maybe hold and just pass the turn. I don't because... hate it. Yeah, that's heads up play there. Sort of thing about I'm sure thing about the Rafiki thing you just mentioned. And now right. next turn we can use Ariel to cast uh grab your swords and then quest up for five. Be in a pretty decent spot. Yeah, it also has whole new world in hand, so this is a potentially explosive game for Nicholas Rausch. The one, two, three curve with some really powerful songs to sing on the following. We'll see if Matthew Campo has a good play here on three. If it's just something like Magic Mirror. It's going to be in some trouble, but if it's Rafiki, might have a shot. Here's Maleficent. That's going to walk right in to grab your sword. Yeah, this is exactly what Nicholas wants. Back it's Nicholas's gonna... way. Yeah, I think we're going to see Nicholas aggressively ink here for a couple turns. Put this be our guest there. Cast grab your sword. Yeah, there it is as an ink. And then now we're going to clear the way, push damage next turn you know, smash, fire the cannon on whatever we play, sing a whole new world, call it a day, and, you know, basically maybe give Matthew a draw one and give yourself a draw seven. 
Now, it looks like Nicholas is looking to go smash plus fire the cannons, and that's going to allow him to then sing Whole New World. I don't love this. I like... Okay. All right. Well, we're going to go really aggressive here. We're going to just uh, fire the cannons on Gaston, leaving just the Maleficent. And then we're going to each player draw seven. And Campo might not be able to come back from this if uh, Nicholas Roush has a couple more characters to play on this turn. Yeah. The nice part about this uh, is you're really stepping it on making, like, the awkward turns for being with this, the most awkward, right? Like, if we hit another Lilo here, too, it basically would have been over. Matthew doesn't have many great plays next turn. Mickey Wayward Sorcerer is one of the few, like, four drops you can play that actually has a good body. And Rafiki would be fine, but the second Maleficent... I'm sorry, the Maleficent isn't going to, you know, impact in a huge way. Yeah, I mean, and look, uh, while each player got to draw seven, Matthew Campo was on the draw, and one of his plays was Maleficent to replace itself. So he essentially got to turn what, five or six cards into seven? Whereas Nicholas Roush only had one card left in hand when he cast his draw seven, so he got the gain of plus six. Mm -hmm. Campo here, trying to figure it out in a bad spot. Has Broom. Uh, looks like another Maleficent, another Pocket Watch. I don't Ursula. say be prepared, but we're still pretty far away. Yeah, Ursula as well. I think you probably have to do something like Maleficent this turn to try and find Maui so that you can find Be Prepared on turn seven. Now, what do you think about trying to empty your hand next turn if you're Nicholas Roush and then playing another A Whole New World now that Campo still has six cards or five cards left in hand? Oh, I mean, that's the dream, right? We just want to chain those off, keep playing all the cards, and put Matthew in this awkward position. Looks like... All right. Just playing to the board. Yep, going to get the Gaston down, going to get this broom down, looks like. Maybe put something back into the deck from the uh, discard pile. But we're going to start with friends on the other side. Draw two. There's a be prepared. Okay, still quite a ways off of it. And we don't have Aladdin to do the cool Aladdin shift trick to play an early be prepared. Here comes the broom. All right, sweep them up. We get something from the discard pile and shuffle it back into the deck. Is it going to be an Ursula? Is it going to be Dragonfire? Be prepared. Something like that. Nicholas Roush still has a grip full, thanks to that whole new world last turn. He only had one follow-up character to play after it with that Simba. I kind of liked Aladdin, as weird as it sounds, because it opens up shift plays and gains, uh, takes the lore from Nicholas. But maybe that's just crazy talk. Well, Is instead of Gaston and Broom? No, sorry, Brooming back uh, an Aladdin. Instead oh, of... excuse me, bring, Brooming back Aladdin. I thought you meant for, as, as the play for turn. Excuse no, me. no, sorry, that, I was not very clear on that. It was fine. Okay, so Nicholas Roush, Gripful, can do a lot of stuff this turn. Can start with Challenging Maleficent to put two damage on the Simba, and then can Rapunzel to draw two cards. Might want to just completely ignore all the things that are going on on the other side. Just questing like crazy. All right. Uh, draw two. I thought I saw a grab your sword. And then there was. Okay, so the the it was like a vanity play almost to go Simba attack for two, right? Because we already had a clear with grab your sword. So really it was just a let's farm a little bit with Rapunzel this turn. And now Matthew Campo only has four ink. It's still three turns away from playing that big sweeper effect, and Nicholas Roush is in the driver's seat. Yeah, you're going to see Nicholas here probably develop this stitch just to actually quest a bunch, because Maui's sort of the next problem. Actually, we're going to go with Captain Hook instead. But still, you know, we're just going to try and quest, quest, quest before we can get to be prepared. And we're pretty far ahead, and we can only really answer one thing a turn from Matthew. So, you know... The Maui comes down, but still, it's two, four, you know, six, seven lore. That's a lot of lore. Yeah, and we can even use Captain Hook to trade with Maui, which allows Simba to protect us still from another uh, 
uh, rush creature, but instead we're just going to smash it to clean it up so we can quest with everything. And we're threatening lethal over two turns, I believe. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, up to 15. And without fear of a be prepared next turn, we can safely play another aerial just bearing Matthew Campo in card advantage and board advantage. Misses on the search, but we still are going up to 15 lore. Yeah, and you can tell from Nicholas, he's like, I've won. You need to go, you know, Rafiki, Rafiki. And that's like your only shot. And if you had that, you probably would have done it a lot sooner in this game. Yeah. All right. Paxton and Matthew Campo loses game number one. Nicholas Roush up a game in the finals. The winner of this event will punch their ticket to the TCG player, Lorcana Invitational, on the October 20th weekend at Apex Gaming. And Nicholas Roush is one step closer to making that dream a reality. 100%. And Nicholas has played really, really well this entire tournament and has on multiple occasions shown a real understanding of not only the game, the opponent's decks, but the way your opponent wants to play. That game, I think, was actually won when we skipped playing into, you know, let's quest and then maybe give them Rafiki. And we lost a chance, you know, get three lore or whatever, but we opened up this whole new world, be, uh, you know, grab your swords, cannon turn. That was actually very strong. So... Nicholas has been very impressive today and, you know, not surprising to see someone who is really in touch sort of what's going on get rewarded. Maybe someone who grinds a lot of pixel bore. All right. As these players are drawing opening hands for game number two, we have Nicholas Roush on your left playing Amber Steel. Up a game against Matthew Campo, playing Ruby Amethyst on your right. I would say that these are likely the two best decks in Constructed Chapter 1. I know that my Stitch Blitz deck that I use with all a lot of the same elements as Nicholas Roush is a ton of fun to play. A Whole New World Drawn 7 feels so good off of Ariel. Uh, Spectacular Singer when you're early and aggressive against these Ruby Amethyst decks. But those Ruby Amethyst decks kind of prey on all those other mid-range decks that normally beat up on Amber Aggro. So it's a nice little cat and mouse game, but I love me some Draw 7s and I love me some Stitch Rockstar. Mm -hmm. All right. Game on. Matthew Campo leads with a goon. That's our comedies on one. We got a Stitch or Leela or sorry, Stitch on the follow up. I always I don't know why I confuse them. Lilo is the little girl, Lil, Lilo girl, and Stitch is the, the new dog. Yeah, I'm uh, seeing a lot of questions in chat asking about where the deck list will be. We're going to lay them outside the Apex Gaming store, and we're going to let Google Maps take a picture of it. So that should be updated in six to seven months if you want to check that out. But there yeah, might be some other places, too. Also, uh, we're going to be just randomly hiding them around the Apex home store like Easter eggs. Mm -hmm. And if you find them, then, well, well, you found Nicholas Roche's winning deck or finals deck, you know. Yep. An interesting turn. Nicholas could, you know, uh, cannon down Archimedes and play a hook uh, or can just play this Steel Aladdin. Steel Aladdin is pretty powerful because it quests for two. But it doesn't rumble in combat very well. That's kind of the trade-off. You want to play it in things like, uh, you know, Stitch Rockstar because it's just something that triggers Stitch and Quest for two. Uh, similarly, you can play LeFou uh, from Amber. It's a one-two. Rumbles even worse in combat than the Aladdin. I quite like the Aladdin, personally. Mm -hmm. Aladdin is, I think, a pretty strong card in this deck. All right, back. So no, uh, also no questing from Nicholas Roush and no trading. Probably has Stitch Rockstar that he wants to try to get down on four. I like this. Yeah, it's a little conservative, but it makes sense. All right, we're going to see friends on the other side. Just as a draw two here from Matthew Campo. Just trying to make sure we hit all of our ink drops and we can cast Be Prepared on time. And I like this too. Sort of my opponent isn't going to do anything. I'm just going to keep questing because I want this card to trade and that's what it's doing already. All right, we have ink number three. Blasting Cannon is Archimedes. That's going to allow for some questing. Let's hope that there is no punish from Mr. Rafiki. Do we want to play another Aladdin? Yes, we do. All right. Get some beatdowns on. Do you want to quest with... I actually think questing with Stitch New Dog. So he's protecting it for 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 his uh stitch rockstar but matthew capo is in such bad shape at the moment 
that if he had Rafiki, I'm confident he'd be hitting the Aladdin over the, the Stitch dog anyway. Yeah, this happens a lot where players, they it's good to play around cards, especially when you can afford to, but your opponent doesn't know it's coming, and the Aladdin is actually worth a lot of lore too. So they might just Rafiki the Aladdin in that world, right? Because they don't know that you have the Stitch. Yeah, um, exactly. And if you do it confidently and pre-plan your whole turn, they have no real hint. Yep. Where right now, if you tank, they're like, oh, why would you tank? It's like, oh, you have Stitch Rockstar in the end. Oh, you're so smart. No. All right. We're going to spin four. We're going to play Stitch. We're going to quest for two. Now the question is, do we quest for three? And instead, it's no. And it's going to leave it open to Dragonfire. I'm not sure that Matthew Cambo has it, but that is the card that you're pretty scared of. But uh, I think I'd be more scared of a five cost Maui, yeah. Yeah, I agree. The ma- it, it's awkward where if you if you quest Maui and Dragonfire or punish, whereas in your low on cards, if you do this, only Dragonfire is a problem, and Dragonfire is just kind of gonna be a problem. So, uh, and I'm sorry, Maui is just gonna be a problem. So, kind of you know dodging it. So we see Rafiki attack into the Aladdin. All right, but if this Stitch Rockstar gets untapped, Nicholas Roush is going to flood the board. We're still a turn or two away, as Matthew Campo, from playing uh, the Be Prepared. So expect him to kind of lean into that. But Nicholas Roush is just going to refuel after playing a bunch of stuff over the next few turns. And the, the sweeper effect is going to not be as devastating. He's going to have a nice little follow up. Yeah, and we just drew a lead low for turn, which is just a one ink draw a new card here. But then we are going to lead with Simba. Works so well with Stitch Rockstar. Okay, we're going to play some stuff and draw some cards. Seems fine. Ooh, oh. and we have a wheel seven next turn that we can play if we expect there to be a sweeper. I, I don't know that it's the best play because Matthew has very few cards left in hand, but we'll see. Yeah, I kind of like just questing with my stitch here. Yeah, and oh no, we're actually oh, gonna wheel. We're just gonna wheel instead. That's so uh, sick. I like this. All right, we're gonna draw seven. And Matthew did discard to be prepared. We'll see if he can find another one. We mm-hmm. still have one ink to play another character here, and here is the new dog. Stitch one drop. Matthew Campo, what you got? You're gonna need some help. Dragonfire. Yeah, Dragonfire is a great draw. You're going to need the Be Prepared now because Nicholas is just going to keep playing into the Be Prepared as long as Stitch Rockstar is around. So Dragonfire lets that card actually stabilize the game instead of just doing, you know, the best to, like, mitigate a bad situation. All right. What you got, Campo? Dragonfire, the, the Stitch Rockstar. That's going to stem the bleeding a little bit. And but next turn you're basically bottlenecked into uh, casting that. Be prepared. I don't think Nicholas even has to add another character to the table. Yeah, only if he wants to. Definitely doesn't have to. All right, here comes questing for two, three, four, five. Seems so weird that Roush is only at four lore so far, but almost all these characters entered play last turn. And Nicholas Roush is minus six lore from once not questing and once from casting a whole new world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this be my guess here. A tough spot between Stitch, which could be huge for another Rockstar Stitch, or Ariel to maybe try and get more value. But I like taking this Stitch and sort of, you know, working our way up towards another Rockstar. All right, Nicholas Roush going to go ahead and do some questing here and then likely going to play uh, one of those utility spells as ink. I'm not sure if he's going to play Tinkerbell as ink or if he's going to play maybe Smash as ink. Definitely a tough spot to be. I lean Smash a little personally just because bodies kind of matter here. Your opponent's about to, like, the, their best play is be prepared. So uh, being prepared for it is kind of nice. Yeah, I just want to keep all your threats so that once your opponent has to be prepared, you can be. First one to mark it on the next turn by just playing out your hand. Agreed. Nicholas Roush knows that he's in the driver's seat, but he also knows that Matthew Campo could have that big sweeper next turn, and he's really trying to figure out the best way to play this. 
Uh, I see two copies of Smash in hand. I'm an easy play Smash as a mana source, and I would not play another character. I think this is just throwing away one card. If your yeah. opponent doesn't play a sweeper, you're just like more than happy to just quest again and say go. Like you just force them to do it already. Agreed. It is a they can't change, and this does not meaning. I mean, getting one or more lore does matter, but like I don't think this is actually going to change it compared to just playing it next turn. So, yeah, and chat's bringing up a great point that he doesn't have be prepared, and Nicholas doesn't know that. So, it's one of those hard moments. We have to walk the line, you know. We know this. We have the vision of everything. Nicholas doesn't. Nicholas just did a draw seven for Matthew. There was a four of in the deck, and the one card that can kind of actually get Matthew out of this spot. Okay, yeah, looks like Rafiki. Yeah, this is going to come down and start chewing stuff up. Uh, mm -hmm. Simba Bodyguard's first on the list. Do we have a backup Rafiki to go all in on it? I think we can play Pocket Watch and then an Ink, and the next one we can maybe go Aladdin plus Pocket Watch. So we're going to go for Maleficent instead to draw a card and provide us with another body. Yeah, Baby Aladdin gonna... would be nice. Yeah, Baby Aladdin would be very nice. Getting the shift going. These magic mirrors are not really cards that are that good in this matchup until the super duper late game. All right, Rafiki going to chew up Simba. And now we're going to go back Nicholas Roush's way. And he set this up perfectly with Big Tink because now we get to, ooh, just grab your sword to clear. And then we can quest without fear. I agree. Yeah, and I really liked your line to pocket watch into Aladdin. Next turn, that would have actually been something that could swing this game, right? Nicholas would have gone down to 12 here, been in a, a terrible, like, not a, a terrible, but a much worse position, and, you know, no! we give us time. Be Ooh. prepared! Here comes the big sweeper off the top of the deck. Nicholas Roush smelled blood, and it was him who was sent to slaughter Matthew Campo back in this game. But he's going to be passing with an empty board. Does Nicholas Roush have the ability to cobble together six lore over the next few turns to try to close this thing out? Yeah, and now Matthew's got to decide, do I want to ink one of these cards? Aladdin is one of the few cards, but has things like Elsa and the Maleficent Dragon that we need to be casting along with doing everything. So my book is I kind of like getting rid of one of the cards, probably Aladdin proper. The Pocket Watch, you know, there's only one of those. You have a bunch more Aladdins. French on the other side is actually a great ink here. Sort of a card you just don't really need. Your opponent has plenty of cards because of Stitch Rockstar. All right. And say go. Back Nicholas Roush's way. We'll see what we can do. There's a Stitch Rockstar. We can just start with that. And then force Campo to have a straight-up answer. If you don't, we get to flood the board again and go from there. I'm going to pass the turn back. Campo needs Dragonfire. Has Maui, not going to do it. Stitch Rockstar might go out of control next turn. We need to find a check. Campo in the tank, trying to come up with something to do. Oh, Elsa is going to keep it exerted, and it's going to be vulnerable next turn. Oh, here comes the chain. Yeah, but Elsa, you know, it's better than nothing, but with Stitch Rockstar, it being exerted and not being able to get immediately punished is just not a place you want to be. All right, Stitch Rockstar played three characters, drew three cards, played four characters, drew four cards, and now Matthew Campo is in some trouble. Another be prepared off the top. No, doesn't have it. We can use the mirror into singing it with Elsa. So you have that going for you. All right, looks like we have other plans. We're just going to go and attack. I know we have Maui. Maui can come down and smash this to Trockstar. There's only uh, four potential lore on the other side up to 18, which means you're going to have your work cut out for you a bit over the next few turns. But uh, Campo here can also play Rabbit's Pocket Watch and 
if uh, Roush leaves things vulnerable next turn, that Aladdin could maybe steal this game. Yeah, Aladdin is probably the best out Matthew has besides, of course, like being prepared. And you see Nicholas is moving with intent, and we've seen him do this every time he sort of feels in the driver's seat. And drawing another Stitch Rockstar definitely sort of puts you in that position. Grab your sword here. Kind of nice at clearing up the board. In the Maui, I guess that the Elsa still lives. So, like, she gets one. Probably it's better to play more creatures, actually. Yeah, we're going to ink a st Stitch Rockstar and play two Rapunzels. We have to sweep right now. Be prepared. Has to come off the top of the deck. It's either the draw for turn. It's an Aladdin. We still have a draw from the Magic Mirror, and we can sing it with Elsa. We have to look for it. There are no other outs for Matthew Campo. Nicholas Rausch smells victory on the edge of his nose. Can he find it? Can Matthew Campo find the third? Be prepared. Yeah, this is exactly what I was talking earlier between games uh, one and two about Nicholas and his knowledge of the format, knowing what's going on, and having a great job of sort of walking the line a lot of times and knowing what to do basically said, I can't beat be prepared if it happens normally. So I'm going to not allow you to have Aladdin as an out. I'm just going to run these two Rapunzel's out. No value. The value is winning the game. And yeah, the value is, is questing forward. for two sucker. Yep. <laughs> and this talk, I mean, the magic mirror, if it hits the be prepared, Matthew's going to be in a great spot. But Nicholas, I think, is a heavy favorite here. All right. The adrenaline rush is real. Matthew, draw your last pathetic card. He's looking at his hand to make sure there's nothing he can do before he draws a card. Once you draw a card, you're, the, the things in your hand shrink. So is it? Be prepared. It's not. It's an Amethyst card. Another Elsa. Nicholas Rauch is going to be your champion here. Taking down the very first ever TCG player invitational qualifier with Amber Steel Stitch Blitz. This deck looked phenomenal all day. And there it is. Matthew Campo extends the hand. Congratulations to Nicholas Rausch, our 13th competitor so far in the Apex Gaming Invitational held at their home store on October 20th, sponsored by TCG Player. Yeah, and I would say Nicholas is the player all day who, to me, once again, seemed to have a, like a mastery of Lorcana, understood what was going on, what I need to play around, what I need to play into, all of these sort of things. When can I hold them? When can I fold them? It's a very deserving win, and I can't wait to battle against Nicholas here in just a couple weeks. Yeah, it's going to be great. So congratulations uh, to him, uh, Nick, taking it down with some impressive play and a really awesome looking deck. I'll be sure to be testing his list out on Pixelborn at some point in the near future. And uh, big congrats to him. I'll be looking forward to chatting with him uh, and uh, seeing him at the Invitational on October 20th weekend. We have another way for y'all to qualify, a couple more ways to qualify. And before we go, I want to tell y'all about them. So uh, this weekend was our first Invitational Qualifier, but we're having another one at Apex Gaming on October the 14th. That's two weeks from today. You can show up, you can play, you can win your seat into the Invitational, just like Nick just did. Uh, we also, on the 20th, that'll be a Friday, uh, October 20th weekend, we're going to be running two Last Chance Qualifiers to lock up the last couple of spots for the Invitational itself. We have 12 invites and four seats were given away, and Nick just took down the first seat, but there's still three more left that you can win yourself. The Invitational itself will start on October 21st. We're going to be broadcasting it to these channels. If you're watching this live, if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be twitch.tv slash Apex Gaming. And then we also have a YouTube channel for uh, Apex Gaming Lorcana on YouTube, so make sure to check that out as well. Well... That was a fun day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's day. all I got. Mm -hmm. It was a big day. It was a big day. I'm happy that, you know, I got to be here for it. It was great. Yeah, uh, it looks like uh, we, we might be able to get uh, Nick on camera for an interview. I don't know if we have camera, but we can do audio only, right? Oh, you have camera. Let's do it. Let's hit him. Let's make sure he can hear us too, yeah? Oh, no. <laughs> the big, the big. 
they are setting it up real quick here. So we'll be there in just one second. But yeah, it, it was an impressive day, a lot of great play, and you know, excited to go play some Pixelborn here later. All right, Nicholas Roush. May I call you Nick? Yeah, you can call me Nick. Yes. Awesome. Congrats on that big victory, and congrats Thanks. for qualifying for the TCG Player Invitational. How's that, it feel? It feels great. That was the whole goal coming in. That was what I really wanted was to qualify to be able to get to play with so many like great Magic players and just like community members. And like the the prize is nice, but like the qualification is is the whole deal. And I'm so excited and super happy. <laughs> All right, I'm so happy for you. Uh, now, tell us a little bit about your uh, Steel Amber deck. I've been mm -hmm. calling it Stitch Blitz, but I'm sure. way more creature dense, and sure. your deck goes a little bit bigger. Uh, what is your take on this archetype? Like, why are you playing this instead of the de facto best deck, Ruby Amethyst? So there's, um, there's essentially there's been in, like in the metagame, there's been two Amber Steel decks, right? There's like the all out Blitz one that plays like Lanterns that kind of shoes Rapunzel and some of the top end stuff, and then you have the mid range one that's playing like Hans Surfer Stitch that and that's not doing the rockstar thing this deck is much more of a hybrid between the two because both of those plans those extreme two plans are great in certain matchups right there are, there are matchups like ruby amethyst where you want to be the aggro plan but you can't do that super well if you're not on 12 one drops 12 two drops with high lore right right but then there's matchups where you're against other steel decks or things like amber sapphire where you are not the beat down right where you want to be playing a grindy game and that's where your cards like Rapunzel's and Tinkerbell's and Grab Your Swords come in. Um, so the, the deck is very, very flexible and the inking system, the inking resource system allows you to do that where you just figure out what cards are most important in all of your matchups and you ink all the rest and then only pay, play the game plan that works against the deck that you're playing against. Yeah, that, that's a great way to, to think about how the deck plays and how you approach some matchups. But I will say... One cost Lilo and uh, the whole new world package. That's like very aggressive slanted trying to beat yes. up on Ruby Amethyst. Correct. And those cards are horrible and uninkable against yes. the other aggro decks. I, I, yes, 100%. And which is why I'm only playing three <laughs> copies of a whole new world because there are a lot of matchups where it's really bad. Yes, your aerials are going to get a little bit worse um, because you're not yeah. playing as many songs that you can hit, but Lilo is still okay um against other decks just as something where once you have the board presence established you can just like play multiple things in a turn and cross the finish line when you need to yeah tinkerbell also looting and does some of that and yeah, i have yeah. a question for you nicholas how much uh like pixel born are you playing and grinding lorcano do we like are you doing a lot of in-store stuff what is only your... in store no only, wonder he's so only, crispy. only in paper correct yeah i have not played on any pixel born now i'm a member of uh, I have a lot of teammates who do play on Pixelborn, and um, I'm very fortunate enough to to test with some of the some of the best people in the world. Um, we're taught like people with world championships, pro tour, pro tour top eights, things like that across multiple games, and I'm very very happy and able to test with those and bounce ideas off of them. And um, the local community and paper is also thriving. So I get to not only have this private group that I'm messing with, but I can also play in paper with the with the locals. All right. Well, Nick, congratulations once again. Make sure to get your friends out for our invitational qualifier on October the 14th. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you on the October 20th weekend since you earned your slot into the invitational and your friends can play in the last chance qualifiers. We're running mm -hmm. two of those on October 20th that Friday. So we'll see you then. Awesome. I'm coming for you, Mason. And I'm coming right. for you, Nick. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nick. Appreciate you. And you. Uh, congrats once again. Thank you. All right. Well, chat, that's going to do it for the broadcast today. Mason, it was a pleasure hanging out with you all day doing coverage, man. Thank you so much. Taryn, what's up, man? This is the first time you've been on camera all day. Taryn's actually playing in the Invitational as well. Taryn is a co-owner of Apex Gaming, and he is playing for charity. Big shout out to Taryn Huck. Yeah, playing for the Trevor Project. Mason's all right, what you got for me, Mason, before we go? Well... I was going to say thank you so much for letting me be on the stream today. It was great to do everything. It was so exciting. I can't wait to see more of the action on the next qualifier and then to see a bunch of you in person on October 20th for the last two LCQs and the Invitational Proper. It's going to be a fun time. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, check out the Lost Boys podcast. That's my podcast, uh, Lost Boys LOR on uh, Patreon, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, we're doing tons of content, not just the podcast. We're also doing gameplay content. 
Uh, myself and Harlan Fear and a, a team of folks from Roanoke, Virginia are working hard to, to make some awesome content for you. Uh, big shout out to TCG Player. Thank you so much for sponsoring our Invitational. It's going to be a great time. Uh, yeah, I think that's it, man. Yeah, you, you can got... find me on Twitter at Mason E. Clark if you want to see more action. So Yeah, Mason also provides coaching for Magic the Gathering and maybe he's going to start providing coaching for uh, Lorcana as well. So keep an eye out for that. If you need some help, he'll, he'll be sure to help you out, yeah? Yeah, I definitely I, will. Feel free to reach out. Thank you so much for Impact Gaming for running this awesome event and making sure that everything ran smoothly. Thanks to the players for coming out. Thanks for the staff for making sure everything was clean and awesome. And thanks to the players who came to play as well as the viewers at home. I'm Tandy. That's Mason and Taryn. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. And we'll see you again to do this all again on October the 14th. See you later.